All right, so we're gonna start off with opening a new folder, uh, 1920 by 1080 p at 300 pixels. Hit create, then you'll be opened up with a white page. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start dragging some stuff over. So I'm gonna have this base template and the health bar over to overlay template inside of the description down below. So we're just gonna drag this over and place this right over that. Kind of get a position. You might have to use your arrow keys to uh, readjust it into the right spot. Looks pretty good. Now we're gonna drag in Kaneki himself. Um, I do have a, another picture with his tentacles all um, like actually connected to him, but we're gonna animate the arms today, also along with the character. So I had to separate them to make sure the pictures don't get all wonky. But if you're using your own anime character or legend from apex you can keep them as a whole picture and i'll show you how to animate them all together but for me i'm going to animate the arms on top of it so and right now i'm just going to readjust my layers to make sure that everything is in order um from kind of key on top the top arm and then bottom arm um, you want to make sure that the overlays like the template overlays for the health bar is below like on the layer below them. I'm just gonna readjust the size. I'm gonna use my arrow keys right now to move him side to side and kind of find a good spot for him. And he looks pretty good right there. So next we're gonna actually move on to the background. So I'm gonna drag this picture over from a wallpaper that I really liked. It's got this dark, uh, Kind of buildings in the background it kind of matches the style of kaneki himself um you can use your own personal patterns or like if you decide to use like a paintbrush you can color your whole uh whole canvas like a blue color and then add a whole bunch of textures and stuff like that and that also works i'll leave some examples in the description um, but for right now what we're going to do is we're going to hold alt and actually clip that to the background layer um, if you don't have an alt button, which I'm not sure why you wouldn't, um, what you can do is you can uh, right click, hit clipping mask, and then it'll mask right to that layer. So you can see that it will still allow you to see everything under it. And then if we turn off the backgrounds, you can see that it's still transparent with that background that you have. Next, we're going to add the text. Um, this is a font that I use pretty regularly. It's called Road Rage. I'll leave a link for it down below. So we're just gonna write out wild ns for my name. And then what I'll do here is I'll copy the layer by holding alt and then clicking on the layer and then duplicating it. Um, then what I'll do is I'll double click on one of the top layers and then I'm gonna change the color to white. You can use any color you like. Um, these are just quick colors I chose for the tutorial itself. That looks pretty good and we're just gonna have to resize a little bit. I'm actually gonna move Kaneki over a little bit. What I'm probably gonna do is I'm gonna connect the background and the template background all into one layer. That way they're not in two separate layers. Um, so I'm gonna highlight both the background and the template background by holding control and then clicking both of them and then holding control again and E at the same time. And now merge the two layers together. Also, I'm just gonna delete the background because we don't need it at this point. We're gonna go ahead and save this file. You can save it as any name you want. Um, just make sure you're able to find this file wherever you're saving it to. I have them saving it in the custom ban banner area. So now we're gonna open up After Effects, click New Project, uh, hit File. We're gonna hit Import. Make sure you save it as Edible Layers Styles because if you merge them all together, we won't be able to do any of the editing stuff that we want to do. It'll save it in a little comp folder. So we're just going to open that up and double click on that and it'll bring all of our layers inside of After Effects. So now at this point, we're just going to bring in the background file or the animated background file. Um, this will also be linked in the description with everything else. Um, so we're just going to resize this so it just fits right over my overlay perfectly. Um, that looks fairly good. Um, and obviously, you're probably wondering how we're going to get this to kind of clip to that. And 
we're going to drag down the video file uh, right below the top layer. And then we're going to click on the little drop down area. And then alpha mat top, it will clip right to that top template layer. And you could just call it done right here. Or what I like to do is I'll probably search up a, I'll go into my effects and presets, type in hue, hue and saturation, and then drop that effect right on top of it. And I'm gonna try to make this a little bit of a darker red. That looks fairly good. Yeah, probably right about 13, I think it. Yeah, I like that. Looks pretty good. So now we're gonna animate the characters. Um, if you have one picture, you only have to worry about this first step. Um, just take the pen tool and find the bottoms and the top and just pen the character the same way I did. Um, you'll go down into effects, go down all the drop downs, click deform, and then you'll find your first pen. And you can see when I move this back and forth, it kind of makes the guy squeeze up and down. This is a very simple way of animating a character without going too in depth. So what I'll do is I'll go out about a second and a half and stretch them either up or down, either way you prefer. I usually tend to go down just a couple ticks. That way you can see right here, he kind of bobs down. But you can see that he stays there. So what we're going to do is highlight both of the points and hit Control C and then Control V every second and a half. And you can see where I'm doing it at um, one second, three seconds, six seconds, nine, twelve, and then right at the end here, I'm going to stop right before, um, just because we don't need that last point. And to make it as seamless as possible, we just need that first point. So we're going to paste it right between those two. And then that way, when you play it back, the starting point and the end point will be the exact same number. So it will be a seamless loop. And now we have Kaneki kind of bouncing up and down. And honestly, if you want to end here, that's perfect. Um, but I am going to go a step ahead um, and hit F9. Um, or you can right click um, keyframe assistant and then you can hit EZs. It just kind of makes them look a little more smoother. But like I said, at this point you can just end and call it a good, but I have Kaneki's arms that I want to animate also. And so what we're going to do is we're going to animate the arms now. So we're just going to click our points. So point one, two, three, and four. Now we're going to go down to our mesh and then our deform and then we're going to click all the pens open just so we can see all of our points. And then what we're going to do is we're going to slightly move our points on the actual thing using our pen tool still. And that looks pretty nice. And you can kind of see how it animates up as he goes down. We're actually going to copy all eight points. And now we're going to paste them every second or so. Um, so remember, control C is copy, control V is paste. So three, six, nine, twelve. And then right at the end, we're going to paste it in the middle of these two points. Delete our last points. Uh, remember, there is four points for this. So we got to delete all four. We only deleted three there. So now we're going to re-highlight our four again and drag them to the end. And this will just make sure that we get a seamless loop. And we'll be doing the exact same thing for the bottom arm. So now we're going to place our points. Just one, two, three. Three should be fine. 
Actually, we'll go ahead and do forward. That way you can kind of anchor that point. Just so it stays stuck to the body. We're going to do our drop downs again. I'm fairly certain if you highlight all of those at once and then hit the drop down, it will drop down all four at the same time. That way if you're doing a very big one or if you're doing one with a lot of points, you can do that. And then again, we're going to go to a second and a half and then move our points. So we'll move this out a little bit, move this one up, move this one a little up, and we're going to move this one a little more to the side. That way it stays connected, but also looks fairly, there you go. And then at three seconds, we're going to copy both, hold control C, and then control V to paste. And then again at six seconds, we'll be doing the same thing over and over again. If these times are too quick for you or whatever, um, you can always change the timing of these. This is just like my preferred time. We're gonna delete those last points, highlight the last four again, and move these to end. That way we can have everything to a seamless. This is kind of far away, so I'm gonna move that over, just kind of even out that. But now we got the full animated character. It looks pretty cool. What we're gonna do is highlight all of these and hit F9 or right click and hit easy ease as I said earlier and we didn't easy ease these earlier either but we'll go ahead and do that right now and hit F9 and that looks pretty good to me um, the last step here probably would just if you want to put a glow on it you can so we're gonna add a glow to both layers So I'll probably add this to the background layer and then also be adding it to the top layer. So there you can kind of see the back glow inside of our background now. Now I'll put a glow effect on the top layer. And remember, you don't have to do this step by step. You can use any anime character you want. You can use any background you want. This video is more to help people just gain inspiration and kind of show people how easy it is to make these. All right, so the last step will be to render this out. So before we render all this out, we want to make sure that we turn off all backgrounds so everything is transparent. If you're not seeing that transparent background, that means there is something on there. So make sure you have any layers that could be behind it turned off, like that base layer. If your back layer is either white or black and you have nothing behind it, you might have to turn on the transparency button. I'll just zoom in on that for you. So now we'll go down to file, export, add to render queue. We'll click on the output method. And then the format just changed to QuickTime. And then for channels, make sure you set to RGB plus alpha. All the other settings, you can pretty much leave how they are. And then output to, you can set this to output to anything. I just have like a folder of all my projects right here. I'm just gonna save it as the MOV file. If the MOV file doesn't work for you, you might have to export as a different type. So now we'll click render. We'll let this run out. All right, now that the render is done, you're all done in After Effects. So we can open up our OBS. So now that you've opened up your OBS, you want to go to your sources, click Add, Add Media Source, and then you can name it whatever you would like. We'll just name this Health Bar. Make sure that you click Loop. You want to click Browse, and then find that MOV file, and then hit OK. And then it will be added to your OBS. It might need to be readjusted. Um, a good easy way to readjust this is by using your arrow keys up and down, side to side. But overall, that should be the perfect size for you. And that'll be all. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Um, I also do sell custom overlays on Fiverr. Um, maybe I'll make some more tutorials if you guys want something more in depth. Um, I'm still working on some Halo health bars. 
Um, maybe some some Warzone ones, we'll see. But overall, that'll be all for this tutorial. I hope you all have a good one, and I'll see y'all later.